Hello and welcome. My name is Meeplis, she, they, and this is Literally Graphic. And today I'm doing another read, read, and re-review, jumping a bit back in time. Let's take a fresh look at Moonshot, the Indigenous Comics Collection, Volume 2. I recently read and reviewed Volume 3, and as an anthology collection that only keeps getting better, feel free to jump right up to that. Many of these authors and artists also contributed to this place, 150 Years Retold. This volume was published by Alternative History Press in 2017. Content notes for environmental racism, colonialism, missing and murdered indigenous women, and the judicial system. I'll also note that Hope Nicholson was the editor on this volume. She has since, to the best of my knowledge, removed herself from comics editing and publishing after being named in a sexual assault allegation. I know that some people will not want to read a book with her name on it, as a result of this, and that's valid. And another reason to check out volume three as she was replaced. Personally, I already own the book and really think the content is worth talking about. Flipping through the creator bio section, this book includes Alina Pete, Cree, Armand Garnett Ruffo, Ojibwe Heritage, Daniel Heath Justice Cherokee, Darcy Little Badger, Apache, David A. Robertson, who I recently profiled, Cree, David Cutler, Micmac, Elizabeth LaPonce, who took over as editor in Volume 3, Anishinaabe and Métis, Fred Pashi, Long Plain, Dakota Teepee, First Nation, Gerard and Petagay Roberts, Arawak, James Leesk, Métis, Jeffrey Vergi, Port Gamble, Scallum, Tribe, Kim Hunter, Métis Heritage, Michael Sheashe, Cado Nation, Richard Pace, Métis Ancestry, Richard Van Kemp, Tlichan Dene, Sean and Rachel Kitsilik Tinsley, Scottish Mohawk and Inuit Cree, respectively. Stephen Gladu, Métis, Steve Kiwetin Sanderson, Plains Cree, Tanya Tagak, Inuit, Washoya Alvitre, Tonga Scots, Gaelic. Other non-Indigenous artists involved include Alexander Nyonikis, David Mack, Hawaii Hau Menton Three, Natasha Altarisi, Nicholas Burns, Peter Dawes, Rosie Gifford, Scott Henderson, and Trudy Hasley. What kinds of keywords came to mind reading this anthology? Community, home, all our relations, tradition, future, hope, and love. The summary on Goodreads is, quote, Volume 2 of the Moonshot Collection centers around present-day indigenous spirituality and traditions. You will see what life and wonders exist now on this earth, the spirit world, alternate dimensions, and more through this gorgeous collection of original indigenous comic slash graphic novel stories. Each of the 15 short stories included in this 200-page volume will be based on a tradition from the author's own tribe slash community. These stories highlight present-day traditions and diversity in indigenous peoples today, with each story adapted into comic book graphic novel format by award-winning artists and illustrators. Moonshot Volume 2 is sure to amaze, intrigue, and entertain." End quote. While the art and writing styles vary a lot throughout the collection, I found them all very appealing. Plus, it's in full color. I feel like this is more common these days, but that was something that initially really set this anthology apart. Gender and sexuality representation was fairly diverse both on the creator side and in the stories. Race was obviously central to the collection. That said, as the description points out and my list of creators highlighted, this collection also shows the diversity of traditions and experiences across people indigenous to Turtle Island. Some stories did highlight issues of class. As usual, it felt like ability was largely assumed and there was not really anything outside of that. To conclude, writing rereads always feels a bit tricky, especially because it felt like each volume of the series has set a new standard. I think I will go with four out of five stars to better reflect how it compares to what I'm reading now. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.